Hey everyone, this is Mark Phillip at Studica and I got another Unity tutorial video here. Today we're going to be looking at how to create a video player so that you can play videos inside of your Unity scene. So by the end of this, you should be able to do something like this mess that I got going on here. I have one video playing up here on a texture, another one down here on a texture, and then I got this uh, Yosemite video that I took some several years ago uh, playing in the background. So Let's go ahead and uh, get started on that. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is create a new project. I made a 2D project myself. You could do 3D if you want, whatever you prefer. Uh, inside your 2D project, you'll want to go ahead and bring in a couple video clips. I'm gonna do three different video clips just to illustrate how you can use multiple render textures or the camera planes to render videos to them. Uh, so go ahead and drag in any videos you want into your project and uh, what we're going to end up having to do is create some video players. Now before I jump into actually making the video player, I want to look at Unity's documentation here because uh, the video player, it's not, it's not that the video player itself is finicky, it's that there are codec requirements and things like that depending on the platform you're building to. If you're on mobile, you're going to want to read this documentation and look at, uh, for instance, the Android supported media codecs and the uh, iPhone supported codecs. These seem to be the most picky and especially Android because of the wide variety of hardware that's been manufactured for over the last, you know, six, seven, eight years. You get a lot of different resolutions that are supported, different codecs for audio and video that are supported. Um, you know, if you're targeting those platforms, be sure you read this. In general, you're going to be safest using an H.264 video codec with an AAC audio codec on it. Um, now, the video player in Unity can play audio, uh, but if you're exporting your video without audio, you don't have to worry about the audio codec. If you do have audio, you need to have a sound mixer somewhere uh, to target that audio with. Now back here in our inspector, the first thing we want to do is create an empty game object. I'm going to call this game object video players, video players, there we go. And I'm going to create uh, three objects under here as children. These are going to be my three video players. This will be player one, call this player two, then save player two, and then uh, this guy I'll just call background. Now for each of these objects, we want to go on to them and click add component, type video, and add a video player. <clears throat> so do this for all three. You could also uh, put just three video player components on a single game object, but I like kind of organizing my things this way. It makes it a little easier to manage in my opinion. Now for the first video player, uh, let's go ahead and drag our clips onto it. So my first one is going to be this... Um, one of my demo videos, and then the second one's gonna be another demo video, and my background is gonna be my Yosemite video. So you just drag and drop the clip onto the video clip component here in the inspector. And now the video player knows what video it's going to be rendering. Now what we need to do is tell it how to render. So for the background, to illustrate this real quick, the, the easiest way to render video out is to choose the render mode and choose camera far plane or camera near plane. I'm going to choose far plane so that it sits in the back of everything. Now where it says camera, you need to drag and drop your main camera on there. Uh, now if I play this, uh, what should happen is I should see the Yosemite video. Yeah, so that comes up and plays. Uh, let me undo my maximize on play. Uh, I want to tell this video to loop, so I'm going to click the checkbox there, and I'm going to tell it not to wait for the first frame. Um, so waiting for the first frame will basically keep the video from playing until the, the first frame has been loaded. Generally, this isn't an issue. I just uncheck it so that I don't get any sort of uh, lagginess or skippiness on the video up front. So even if I miss a couple frames at the beginning, I don't really care for my background. Uh, we can also modify playback speed if we want. I'm going to keep it as is. I'm going to keep the aspect ratio on fit horizontally. And the reason I want to do that is because my uh, my game aspect ratio is 16.9. So, uh, and so is my video. My video is 1080p, 16.9 aspect ratio. So it makes sense for it to fit horizontally. 
And I don't have an audio source currently, so what I can create is a uh, game object audio. We'll do audio source. It will be in the middle here. And uh, on background, I can go in here and drag and drop my audio source on there. And then uh, let me make sure my volume's turned down a little bit. I don't want it to be too loud uh, because this video has people talking from Yosemite. There we go, so you can hear my video playing. Uh, so yeah, we can assign an audio source to it, and uh, if you wanted, you can manipulate it with audio mixers or whatever you want to do. Now for the other two videos, what I want to do is uh, show you how you can render to textures. Now, what's nice about rendering to textures is that you can create game objects in your game that are, say, an odd shape or like a 3D cube or something like that, and you can assign it a material that uses a render texture that the video player renders to. So first thing we need to do is go up to Assets and uh, do Create Render Texture. Now this first texture I'm just going to call Text1. And what I want to do is go up to Game Object. I'm going to create a 3D quad. So this is uh, essentially this is where my other video is going to render. And the way I make it do that is by dragging the text one render, uh, render texture onto the object here in the scene view. And what that's gonna do is automatically create a new material for me in a material folder. And since I'm in 2D, uh, what I wanna do is left click that text one and, uh, sorry, I wanna left click the text one material and I wanna mess with the shader. I wanna change the shader from standard to uh, default sprite. That way I don't get that dim look on my material. And now that I have the material in the quad, and we can't see the quad anymore, but it's still there. When I click on it, you can see the rectangle component. Uh, what I want to do now is go to Player 1, my Player 1 video, and I want to set the render mode, make sure it's set to render texture. And when it asks me for the target texture, I want to drag Text 1 into there. And now what this is going to do is render out to the Texture 1 render texture, uh, and then this material that's attached to my quad is using that render texture as a reference. And so when I play now, we see my other video here show up on top of my background video. Now you'll notice some weird uh, aspect ratio problems here. You see how my video is like in the middle, but it's not filling the extents. The problem is that I forgot to change my uh, text one render texture when I first created it. I'm left clicking on it now in my inspector, or sorry, my project view, and we see the size. It's set to 256, 256. I'm going to set it to the native dimensions of 1920 by 1080p, or sorry, 1920 by 1080. Uh, so this is 1080p. And then I'm going to give it two times sample anti aliasing. Um, I don't, you don't usually need to do that, but I have heard people say that sometimes it will get weird bugs if you have no anti aliasing on. I don't know how true that is, but I generally do two times anyway. Uh, now if I play this, you'll see that my quad is now accurately filled up and I can scale this out and not lose resolution until I start going above, you know, 1080p. So I can keep this somewhere like up here, sort of like a picture in picture, right? Now I can, I can do this with a second video as well. I have three players here. So why don't I go ahead and make another render texture, go up to assets, create render texture, call this one text two. Make sure its size is set to 1920 by, uh, whoops, 1920, 1080, uh, with two times samples on the anti-aliasing. And then I'm gonna create a 3D object, quad, and I'm gonna move this guy down to say the bottom left. Now I'm gonna drag text to render texture on top of it. And then it's going to take a text to, it's going to make a text to material. And same thing as before, I'm going to click that material, go into the shader, choose sprites default. Then under player two, I'm going to drag the text to render texture. Whoops, that's the material. Text to render texture onto the target texture component. And we need to make sure our render mode is set to render texture. I'm going to set this to loop, uncheck, wait for first frame, and then I'm going to do the same on my player one. I forgot to do that earlier. And now uh, when I play, you see three different videos all playing at the same time. 
and I still have my audio source playing through my Yosemite video. And that's kind of, that's pretty much the gist of it. And if we want, we can mess around like with the background one. I'm going to fade the alpha for the camera, put it say like halfway, and I'm going to slow it down. And now we get this like slow-mo effect in the background, I'm going to speed it up. And it's not running very well sped up. <laughs> but yeah, you get all these different options you can mess around with. Um, for the alpha transparency, that only works when you're using the, the camera mode. Uh, if you want to start fading alpha of a render texture, you're actually going to want to grab the shader's um, uh, the shader color property underscore color. So you would grab uh, the render texture dot material dot set color variable inside of a script. You wouldn't be able to uh, do this easily through the inspector uh, if you wanted to dynamically change it. If you wanted to just change the uh, if you just wanted to change the transparency by default, you would just click on the material, go under the tent, and just change uh, like the alpha. And you can see that now is affecting my bottom left uh, option. Or I could say tint it like purple. You know, I could do whatever to it. Um, but if you want to actually modify these properties dynamically through a script, uh, you're going to need to grab the material data and you're going to need to grab the set color function uh, from the material library. So with that being said, that's all there is to this uh, pretty straightforward uh, demonstration today. Hopefully it helped you out. If you got any questions or uh, anything, feel free to leave a comment and uh, be sure to check us out at www.studica.com. And uh, thanks for watching.